for the revival that you're beginning right here in our own hearts and minds. A revival that will touch the nations of the world, that will put Jesus Christ first above everything. Father, we want a passion and a love for God. And Father, we pray too in Jesus' name for family, friends, co-workers, neighbors, and those who don't know you, especially children and grandchildren, husbands and wives. Father, we lift them up quietly in our hearts, not to condemn them, Lord, but to believe you, that you would touch them and open their hearts to more of you. I want you to pray for people that you know especially, even if they're right next to you. You're not judging them, you're just saying, God, help them. Father, we pray too for the sick in our church. We pray for Mrs. Mrs. Taylor, who is always reading. We, we pray for Mr. Baker and Ms. Williams. And those and Arthur and those who are not here that I don't know about who are sick and especially those who made it here today who are not feeling well. Father, by the stripes of Jesus Christ, your son, they are healed. We are trusting you for their healing. And Lord, we exalt thee over this service. Let no man be exalted. Jesus Christ is Lord. Hallelujah. Glory to God. You know, sometimes we always hear, and last week was one of those times, we talked about how wonderful God is, that he can do great miracles. And we talked about how we too can expect God, by faith, to have miracles. Yes, sir. And you know, miracles are not outlandish. Sometimes we give up, but you got to believe God can do something great. Yes. You know, I have a household where all of us, we always think we, God can do something. I've been in impossible situations over and over again. My children have, my mother-in-law have, my mama have. You know people who've been in impossible situations. Yes, I know some of y'all lives, and I know you've been in impossible situations. Yes, and look what the Lord has done. Yes, now, I want you to have faith in God. Man will discourage you, but you know, I don't like all these TV programs where people get a little touch and then they was on a crutch and, and then they just come hop on the stage and then you go in the back door and go behind the scenes and find out that they, they heal after all. But you know, we have witnesses in the church that God does miracles and they have actually been healed. Hallelujah. 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 So sometimes we get a touch from God. I get a lot. And I, you don't always tell people, but I want you to tell people what the Lord has done for you. Yes. It may be an occasion where something will happen special for them. Mm -hmm. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. So miracles are about faith, aren't they? Not only your faith, but the faith of people around you. But there's a side of Christ that many of us can identify with better. Surely I can. And I think you will too. We think of God being just God. Yes, he is totally God. But there was something unique that God did with his son. He sent his son to become a man. Yes. That means he had to become one. He became man. Mm -hmm. He wasn't man in heaven. He became a man. Mm -hmm. And there's something about him becoming a man that we need to understand, especially as we get our hearts ready for communion. He didn't come down. God can't die for our sins. God is eternal. God is an eternal being. How can an eternal being die? Man can die. Yes. So God became a man. Yes. So that he can die instead of us. That is what the gospel is really all about. That's what you need to tell people. Is that you don't have to die for your sins. Jesus did it for you. Yes, death is that shadow that comes. But you, just like him, will rise again. And some of us who are waiting for his coming will be touched, hallelujah, hallelujah, and be changed in the twinkling of an eye. Those are things I believe with my heart. That's not something I can get out of logic. I get it because I believe it in my heart. Yes. yes. If you don't understand who he was as a man, it's very difficult to understand how God became one. In the Old Testament, in the book of Genesis, uh, your friend Jacob had 12 boys, 12 sons. He had daughters too. But there was one called Naphtali. Naphtali. And he was the sixth son. And there was something about him. I guess he was six. I'm just guessing at that. I didn't read all that. But there was something about him that had a little brief blessing about being a foe that was released and free, that was made free to produce bond. 
It sounds so strange to me. But in the land of Naphtali, during the time of Jesus, there's a place called Galilee. And in Galilee, this is where Jesus was raised, in Galilee. There were three districts of Palestine, Judea, Samaria, and Galilee. And Galilee is this wonderful place that goes from the Jordan to the Mediterranean. And up at the top of it was Mount Hermon, which is where Jesus was transfigured. Galilee is where Jesus did 19 of his 32 miracles. Not Jerusalem. Galilee. But the Galileans were a unique group of people. And that's where Jesus was raised. Not in Bethlehem of Judah. He was born there in Judah. The great Judah, you know. The prophecy that Judah got was he was the lion's blood. He got a powerful prophecy. But he was born in the land of Naphtali where he was a deer that was released and made free. That's where he was raised. He had to be born in Bethlehem to fulfill the scriptures. But he was raised a Nazarene. He was raised in Nazareth. What about these Nazarenes? They were unique people. Different than the religious and the powerful and the rich that lived in Judea. They were a lot different than them. They were not as educated as them. I just want to give you just a briefing before we turn to the scripture. But they were generous people. They were impulsive, like some of us. We do things at the spur of the moment. You just hop and do something. They were impulsive. They were simple, simple manners. Not elaborate table calls with which fork and which knife you should use to cut this and cut that. They had simple manners, you know? Just enough to be polite. You know, like us. They were earnest. They were full of piety. In other words, they were honest. They were hardworking people, earnest about what they do. They were excitable. You know, that's what a lot of people say about us people. Since I'm feminist, I gotta be careful. But, you know, we're excitable people. We got emotions. We get excited. You know, when we, when we get a touchdown, we cut up. Hallelujah. That's who we are. Yep. Hallelujah. Come on, Jesus. We get excited. We're not all calm and like nothing happened. We get excited. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. We're passionate. Come on, Jesus. They were passionate people, just like you. Full of passion. There were some people say violent or forceful, but I call it forceful. Yes. The Nazarenes were forceful people. They pushed hard. They pushed hard. They were forceful. I want you to get a picture. This is how Jesus was raised. He was a forceful man, not a weakling. He was strong and forceful. He wasn't all that holy with his robes and his tassels and, and walking around. No, he was a common man. Generous and kind. Passionate, impulsive. Simple, excitable, and forceful. The Talmud says that's the Jewish law. He cared more for honoring, the, 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 the Galileans cared more for, the, for their honor than for money. We gotta get that. Honor was more important than money. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Hey look, this is what Jesus was raised as. He was, let me tell you something, they were so rejected by the religious and the learning. They were always rejected by them. Why? They didn't have the same dialect. You wonder why when Jesus was at the fire, when Peter was at the fire, after they captured Jesus, how did they know Peter was a Galilean? You know why? Because he had a dialect. His grammar was not good. He didn't say his R's right. He said, y'all, ain't. You know, the, the, the learned didn't care for that. They don't talk right, them Galileans. They're not that educated class. They just themselves. They just want to be who they are. Come on, Jesus. You know some people like that? Are you one of those kind of people? Yes. yes. You don't really care yes. how you, what they say about you? Come on, Jesus. Oh, I'm hot already? Oh. Mm -hmm. Listen, I want you to think about the picture here. Those who were religious, thank you, man. In, this, in the city of Judea, yes. down in Jerusalem. The religious, they were a trip and a half, you know what I mean? That's what we used to say in the day. My kids say, Dad, why don't you say a trip in 99? 
They were a pure trip. You know what they did? When they see the Galileans, it was like they turned their noses up. You ever heard that phrase? The Galileans. Oh, that's a Galilean. So you see, already, before Jesus even do anything, they don't even like him. He already despised and rejected him. Because he's just a common man. Forceful and strong, simple. He had a dialect. They could tell he's from Louisiana. <laughs> That's Jesus. Yes, sir. Is that a man that you can see and feel? That's what he was. He was truly a man. He was with reproach. Or well, another word for that is they were prejudiced against him automatically because he was from Galilee. Mm. That was a saying, can anything good come from Nazareth? Yep. Can anything good come from Luzine? Mm. Oh, Hold out. Mm. Bogalusa. Mm. Reserve. Come on. Hallelujah. Yes, sir. Can anything good come out of simplicity and forcefulness? Can anything good come out of a man who was despised and rejected just for where he was raised? He knew a lot, but he talked like the regular man. His disciples, many of them were from Galilee. The Sermon on the Mount was done in Galilee. Galilee was sometimes referred to by the Jews despicably as the Galilee of the Gentiles. If you turn with me to Isaiah chapter 9 first. Are you getting a picture of Christ? Yes. Some of the, one of the early fathers, Julian, referred, he didn't want to refer to Christians as Christians anymore. You know what he wanted to refer to Christians as? Galileans. Because that fits better who you should be as a man or a woman than somebody from Jerusalem, Judea, or Rome. Isaiah long ago prophesied way before Jesus that something was going to happen good in Galilee. And I want to go to that scripture only for the sake of time. I'm going to move pretty fast. So I want you to follow me. I want you to see Christ the man. Say Christ the man. Christ the man. Now don't you ever forget he was God in the flesh. You know that. But you need to know he, he, was, he was tempted on every side. There is no temptation you're going through right now that Christ was not tempted in. Yet he never sinned. For him to carry your sins, he couldn't be a sinner. He couldn't give Satan the right to keep him in hell when he descended in the depths. When Satan got that Lamb of God who takes away the sins of the world, he thought he had everything. But when Christ hit hell, he knew right then, oh my God, hell has been destroyed. Because he had no sin. But this is why he became a man. It's for me and you. Verse 1 of chapter 9 of Isaiah. It says, Nevertheless, there will be no more gloom for those who are in distress. In the past, he humbled the land of Zebulon and the land of Naphtali. But in the future, he will honor Galilee of the Gentiles by the way of the sea along the Jordan. The people walking in darkness have seen a great light on those living in the land of the shadow of death. A light has dawned. You see, Naphtali, you don't know much about them, do you, Zebulon and Naphtali? You don't know much about them. We know about Judah and Joseph. We know about some of the sons of Reuben. We know about some of Jacob's sons, but they were the humble group that you didn't know that much about. But he said in the future, something special is going to happen to that humble tribe that was dispersed, that went through troubles and trials that nobody really knew much about. Something great is going to happen in that land. A light to the Gentiles is going to rise up in Galilee. Prophesied hundreds and hundreds of years before Christ. Come on, Jesus. He was born in Bethlehem, raised in Galilee. He was a what? A Galilean. Today, I want you to know who he was by the character of the people. He was a simple person. He was not complex. That's why richness, wealth didn't matter to him. Honor mattered to him. Yes, sir. 
more than wealth, more than power. This is the man who was despised and rejected, like some people we know. That people don't want to sit next to on the bus years ago, not even sit in the front of the bus at all. Despised, you know, whose language was not exactly the proper language, but they were chosen by God. Yes, sir. Hallelujah. Somebody need to humble themselves this morning. Come on. And just say, if it was good enough for Jesus, yes. it's good enough for me. Hallelujah. Somebody need to humble themselves and understand what this is really all about. It was about God who became a man and he chose a place before time, back in Isaiah, even back as far as Genesis, where he wanted to be raised up as a man. God planned it that way. He wanted him to have the character of a Galilean. Not with rich robes and power and majesty like we're about to go through in a couple of months. That's not what Jesus was about. He wasn't about the red robes and, and all the power and, and glory and all the, the books and all the volumes of, of stuff. No. He was a simple Galilean. That's what he was. But since he was the word, he had to know the word. Hallelujah. Yes. Because he was the word. Yes, yes. So nobody had to teach him anything. Hallelujah. That's why they couldn't they couldn't understand how did this man know what he knows. Turn with me to John chapter 7. Who? Oh. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Am I going too fast? Thank you. The young people say no, but the older people say yeah. <laughs> they say get on with the young people. Get to say slow up a little bit. In John chapter 7, Jesus goes up to the Feast of Tabernacles, and there are questions asked about him. The religious were waiting for him. It's before the resurrection of Lazarus. But they heard of the miracles, like at Canaan. They heard of the great miracles of healing. And they heard about the bread and the fish. So the religious in Jerusalem, now he's out of his place of Galilee. Remember, they don't like Galileans automatically. It's kind of like if you went to a clan rally. You think they notice you? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. They would know him yeah. when he came, because there's something about a Galilean. Yeah. But I want you to see in chapter 7 a couple of questions that were asked. One is up there in verse 11 of John. It says, now at the feast of the Jews, the feast, the Jews were watching for him and asking, where is who? That man. Pilate said when he brought him before all the people, he said, behold the man. We forget that part. He was flesh and blood, but he was God. Behold the man. The religious are saying, where is the man? And then now in verse uh, 15, they say, how did this man get such learning without having studied? Well, guess who he is? He is the word that yes. you study. Yes. But you see the man. Yeah. How many people look at you one way? And don't see the woman or man that you are. Judge you by what you look like. Judge you by your dialect. But have no learning. Have no knowledge of your learning. Or your skills. Who you are. That's, right. mm -hmm. That's how we do things in this world today. How would appear as judgment. Yes, sir. It says, how did this man get such learning? He is the word of God in the flesh. But behold the man. Where is the man? They ask. You go down a few verses, it says in verse uh, 25, isn't this the man they are trying to kill? They despise him enough to hang him on a tree. Sounds familiar? Lynchings? Everybody ever heard of those? Mm -hmm. yep. They despise him. You and I cannot understand. Why would you want to kill somebody for no reason? They despise and rejected him. 
already. Yep. They have done much for miracles, but yet they want to kill him. Wow. There you do miracles, and you're a Galilee. I dare you pretend that you're more than what you should be. I dare you act like somebody when you're just a Galilee. Some of y'all let that burden come on you without being who you are. You shouldn't care what they say. Come on, Jesus. Jesus was Jesus. Come on, yes, God. yes. He didn't let that hold him back that they were even trying to kill him. His miracles were so great, the people were following him. But the religious and the wealthy and the learned, they despised him. If you go down with me to verse 31, it says, When the Christ comes, will he do more mir miraculous signs than this man? This man. When Christ comes, is he going to do more than this man? Walking on water, feeding thousands of people with just a few loaves of bread and fish. Mm. Healing blind people, raising the dead. You mean to tell me somebody gonna come back alone that you call Christ that just because they come from Jerusalem or Judea or the city of David that you would say this is the Christ? But because he came from Galilee and he's done all these things, you just won't recognize him for who he is? For a long time, you celebrated basketball players of one persuasion. And long come a Michael Jordan. Mm -hmm. He looks a little different than the ones y'all used to celebrate. Mm -hmm. Or Jackie Robinson. <laughs> Look a little different than the ones y'all used to celebrate. Mm -hmm. But maybe it's because of how well he played. Come on, yes, sir. That you had to accept him for who he was. Yes. yes, sir. So the people are saying, could the Christ do more than this man, even though he looks different and talks different than what we expected? Maybe he's the one. Yes, sir. Come on. Behold the man. Yes. Today, you need to think about the man of Christ so you don't get too confused that somehow he was royal from birth. He was royal as far as his godhood, but as far as his manhood, he was just like you and just like me. And then in verse 35, the Jew says, where does this man intend to go where we cannot find him? Where is this man going? You know where he's going? Back where he came from. Yes. To heaven. Yes. Mm -hmm. And since you don't believe in him, he's telling the Jews, you can't go where you can find me. Mm. Wow. Because I'm not going to be here no longer. Yep. You're going to do what you got to do to my manliness. Yes. But my godliness. Come on, sir. Come on. Will raise me from the dead. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And I'm going back to my father's house. Yes. yes. Hallelujah. You can't come where I am. I'm not going to prepare a place for you. Yes. I'm going to prepare a place for those who believe. That's right. Hallelujah. Come on, Jesus. Yes. Verse 41 says, He is the Christ. Still others ask, How can the Christ come from Galilee? You better watch who you talk about. Mm -hmm. How can anything come from Galilee that's good? <clears throat> Somebody said it may be a black pope. Oh, boy. I guarantee you, just like a black president, he'll be the Antichrist and everything else before they finish with it. Yep. He'll wish he wasn't a black pope. <laughs> <laughs> Despise and rejected people. Yep. But God exalts them. Yes, yes, sir. Yes, sir. Come on. They can become great in Hallelujah. his eyes. Come on, Jesus. If you go down with the verse 51 says, Does our law condemn anyone without first hearing him to find out what he is doing? Well, yeah, just like the law does today. Put a lot of people in prison for something they didn't do. The law is not exactly just, is it? No. And this is the verse I want you to see before we take communion is, They ask one of their own, are you from Galilee too? Verse 52. Look, on, look into it. 
and you will find that a prophet does not come out of Galilee. Hey, what did Isaiah 9 say? The greatest prophet to Jews? Mm -hmm. They memorized the book of Isaiah. Yeah. They saw Isaiah 9, 1 that you just saw. Mm -hmm. But you know what? It didn't say prophet. It says, it, impl it implied God was coming out of Galilee. Something greater than a prophet. Are mm -hmm. uh, you from Galilee? Can you relate to being a Galilean? That's my question to you today. Can you relate to being a simple person? Or are you striving to be something great? Do you accept other people the way they are? Are you a simple person with passion? Do you have passion? I want you to have passion for Jesus if you don't have it for anything else. Are you a forceful person? Are you one to give up easily? Because Jesus wasn't like that. He said the forceful and the violent would take it by force. That's right. If you just let people just run over you and you're not trying to fight back, you got to be forceful with what you need out of this life. Yes. It ain't gonna drop in your life. You don't have to be sneaky mm -hmm. and crooked, but forceful, yes. 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 honorable, yes. Yes. and passionate. Yes. Yes. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Don't worry if they despise you. The Bible says, humble yourself, and in due time, I will exalt you. Yes. 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 Behold the man. Yes. Can you relate to him as a man? Yes. Who prefers honor above money? Yes. If you need to get there. Are you worried about what people despise you about? No. Or are you just forcefully advancing and doing what you think is right? Yes. Come on. Today, when you take communion, <coughs> you became a man so that you will have no sin to hold you into hell. His manliness, his manliness wasn't recognized as godliness. He was just like you and me. Today, I want you to remember that part of Christ when you eat the bread. Remember, he was a lot like you. But you need to advance forcefully in your life. Press forward. Don't let no man hold you down. Keep your vision ever before you. Fight the good fight of faith. And don't go look back and say, people that's right. Uh, on top of me, they're doing this to me, rejecting me. Remember him. Yes. yes. Hebrew says, consider him. Yes. But if you don't know a man, it's hard to consider him. Mm -hmm. Today, consider that part of Christ that is the man. Yes. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Today, I just want you to have that heart to know that God became a man. Yes. He was raised just like you. Yes. He didn't walk around like they say with a silver spoon in his mouth. Yeah. He worked and achieved, but he was just himself. Yeah. He didn't try to be nobody else. Oh, he didn't deny his birth. He could have lied and said, no, I, I, I'm not from Nazareth. Mm -hmm. They didn't have no birth certificates back then. You don't know where he was going. <laughs> <laughs> That's up. That's up. He was acting on it up with him. If he did have his birth certificate, he said, I'm from Judea. Jesus of Nazareth. Yes, sir. And he was proud of it. Amen. You ain't lying to nobody and say you from uh, New York, did you? <laughs> oh, some of y'all did. <laughs> you ain't lying to nobody. You know, some people from Louisiana, when I used to meet them, when I traveled, uh, they would say they're from New Orleans, lying like a little bit. They're from the countryside, lying and say they're from New Orleans. They from New Orleans. They know ain't nobody ever heard of nothing else. <laughs> You are that simple people like he was. Yes, sir. And if you just be forceful with your life, yet simple, honorable with your life, putting honor above money, God will exalt you in due time. He'll put you where you belong. It doesn't matter if they despise you. It doesn't matter if the law is applied to you unequal. Isn't it done to him? Yes. Consider him. Yes. They wanted to kill him. For what? Because he was a Galilean. Mm -hmm. That's all. Mm -hmm. They lynched some people back in the day mm -hmm. just because mm -hmm. they were Galileans, if you will. Mm -hmm. Today,
day when you bow your head and you get ready to take communion. I want to prepare communion right now if you don't mind. I want you to start thinking about who you are in Christ. <coughs>